race for the Senate presidency and other leadership positions for the 9th National Assembly has effectively begun. With several names in the fray and some of them who have officially thrown their hats in the ring, the dynamics and the horse trading have taken a new dimension. One of the most vocal contenders for the Senate president's position is the majority leader of the Senate, Ahmed Lol. And he was here in Lagos today. Our political correspondent, Sheo Kimbaloi, tells us his mission and the importance of the event. That was the cue for most of them, a ticket they got for entry into the 9th National Assembly. It's not on our agenda. The leadership of the APC has perhaps learned its lessons from the incidents of 2015 and they don't want a repeat of the scenario. This time around, we will have all learned the right, the right lessons from our immediate past and allow the positive side of those lessons to shape our future. Interestingly, politicking over the leadership of the National Assembly has begun. This is how the party standings look like for the Senate, where the APC has the majority, but only two party minority presence. And in the House of Representatives too, the APC holding sway. But the game has begun to fill the leadership positions. These are some of those seeking the number three position in the land. Senate the Senate Majority Leader, Hamel Lawan, on a second shot at the Senate presidency, is already making overtures and consultations. He is in Lagos meeting senior journalists and some elected senators of the APC. Becoming the Senate president, not for selfish reasons, not because we want to be at the name, but because we want to make a positive difference in governance in Nigeria. As he converses for their support, how does some of his colleagues view his chances? You also need a leader that will be able to consult, that will be respected, and that will be appreciated. And I think it's within this context that we are saying Ahmed Lawa, you know, should be the Senate president. The mistake we made in 2015 will not repeat itself because one's beaten twice sharp. So we are more than prepared. What happened in 2015 was a little bit of a mix-up, and there's not going to be mix-up this time around. The only YPP senator says he has the party's backing on the side he has taken. Well, everything I'm doing has the backing of my party because I cannot just be alone in the Senate. I have to look at um, people that um, I have to, uh, I will work with. And the only female senator in the room, Senator Olure Mitunubu from Lagos, is also eyeing the deputy Senate president position. This is the time and I believe that I can give the women, you know, uh, good representation. The race has begun, although it is about two months to the inauguration of the National Assembly. Analysts say the ruling APC must be tactful and strategic as not to have the situation slip out of its control. Walking Baloye, reporting for channels, television news. Consumer goods giant Unilever PLC has been speaking on early detection and treatment of oral health challenges. The category manager, Mrs. Tolua Leki Salu, who was speaking at the uh, event to mark the 2019 World Oral Health Day at the Junior Health, uh, that would be the Junior Secondary School Life Camp, stressed the need for regular checkups as well as brushing the teeth twice daily. She advised Nigerians to take their oral health seriously and avoid other medical health challenges. It's the 2019 World Oral Health Day. And this time, Unilever PLC, makers of Pepsodent Toothpaste, took its campaign to students of LEA Junior Secondary School Life Camp. The message is simple, catch them young to build better oral health for all Nigerians. Through songs and demonstrations, students learn how to keep their teeth clean by brushing daily. We are in Abuja today, we also had a team in Ikorodu and Badagri, so we use that to capture the parents. However, for the children, you know when it comes to songs, they pick songs faster, when it comes to demonstration and all of that, that's why we focus on the school's activation for the children. For some years now, Unilever has been partnering with the Federal Ministry of Health to preach the message of oral hygiene to all. 
This includes frequent visits to schools, markets, and places of worship. We have an MOU memorandum of understanding to reach out to 10 million Nigerian school children on oral health habits, especially uh, oral hygiene habits. We'll teach them for about 21 days to we'll observe them behavioral change to make sure they change their habits. The president of the Nigerian Dental Association has a word for Nigerians. Most people go to the dentist only when they have orofacial pains or when there's a medical dental emergency. So we're looking forward to improving that habit. That is why a program like this Time World Oral Health Day uh, celebration is geared towards raising awareness to the need, to the fact that people need to visit their dentists. Regular dental check, brushing twice daily, are some of the recommendations in maintaining good oral health. This hopefully will save Nigerians from having to overstretch their budgets for oral-related health challenges. Watching the news at 10 on channels television. Let's quickly shift our gears again now, shall we? To business news with Melinda Kinlami. Many thanks, Kimba. Welcome to business news. Over a thousand delegates are in the Rwandan capital, Kigali, for the seventh edition of the Africa CEO Forum, which begins today. This year's event has the team. Open Africa from Continental Treaties to Business Realities. Our business correspondent, Chimedi Obiwagu, is attending the forum and has this report. Is the Kigali Convention Center, the venue of this year's Africa CEO Forum. Inside the center are about 1,800 delegates from across Africa, including four presidents and several ministers. They are just here to chart a new course for a united Africa. From Brexit to trade war, a divide is roaring up in the global economy. And with a historic signing in Kigali in March 2018 of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, greater change is needed if this initiative is to succeed. From the start, the Africa CEO Forum has had the ambition to create new relationships to break borders in Africa. And we did it. We connected more than 5,000 CEOs across Africa since 2012. And today we are here gathered with a new ambition. The ambition to give you, private sector leaders, the will to become true ambassadors of economic integration and make sure that the CFTA becomes a business reality. This conference is for CEOs to share with other CEOs their experience and ideas to turn these opportunities into reality. The choice of Rwanda as the host country of this year's forum is not far-fetched, as the country has been identified as the fastest growing economy on the continent, and in a few days will celebrate 25 years of the end of the genocide. It is a very timely for us to gather here today to discuss how to make the most out of this historic agreement among other important issues. We only reach this point because Africa came together with a strong unity of purpose that is rooted in the rising aspirations of our young people for a better future. This two-day forum is certainly a busy one for these African CEOs. It is expected that at the end of this forum, the decisions reached will help in shaping the future of the African continent for better. From the Convention Center here in Kigali, I'm Chimizie Obi Iwagu, reporting for Channels Television News. Back home in Nigeria, the Nigerian stock market is feeling the heat from fears of a global economic recession as the main index began the week on a negative note. Kenny Olashu Bawale has a summary of today's trading numbers. Hello and welcome to the stock market report. The fear of a global economic recession is also taking its toll on the Nigerian equity market as the last trading week for the month of March began on a negative note. Investors' appetite for stocks remained weak, leading to a 0.31% drop in the All Share Index. Total value of all listed securities stood at 11.576 trillion naira. 
All the major sectors close in the red, with the industrial goods counter taking the heaviest hit, down 1.64%. The insurance and banking sectors followed, shedding 0.97% and 0.78% each. Volume of shares traded were lower as 168.72 million shares worth 3.75 billion naira were exchanged in 3.048 deals. Tier 1 lenders such as GT Bank, Zenit and Access Banks made the list of top trades. And that's it on the Stock Market Report. I'm Teniola Shoboeli. Let's hope things look up tomorrow. That's business news tonight. It's back to you, Gimba. Brilliant, Belinda. Many thanks indeed. On the foreign scene, British Prime Minister Theresa May has promised to continue working to get MPs to back her Brexit deal before it is put before the House this week. Addressing MPs earlier today, she said that she does not yet have enough support to win a vote on her EU withdrawal deal. Let's get a wrap-up of the international news. Joyce Ohaja is standing by in London with Around the World in Five. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom in London. Tonight we begin in the United States with the results of the inquiry into allegations Russia conspired to help Donald Trump win the 2016 election. The summary of the eagerly awaited report by special counsel Robert Mueller has finally been released and the president was quick to respond. It was just announced there was no collusion with Russia, the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. So it's complete exoneration. No collusion, no obstruction. However, although the two-year Mueller investigation found no evidence of the Trump campaign conspiring with Russia to win the presidency, it left unresolved whether Trump had tried to obstruct justice by undermining the course of the inquiry, a key issue for the president's critics. President Trump is wrong. This report does not amount to a so-called total exoneration. Special Counsel Mueller was clear that his report, quote, does not exonerate, close quote, the president. Outside the White House, people were divided in their reactions. And political figures on both sides took to Twitter to express their views. And President Trump himself was succinct in his summing up. I just want to tell you that America is the greatest place on earth. And now to the UK, where uncertainty still surrounds every aspect of the proposed withdrawal from the European Union. A weekend of Brexit politics and protests led to the story once again dominating the headlines. In the face of widespread calls for her resignation, both within the press and parliament, Prime Minister Theresa May held a crucial cabinet meeting at number 10 Downing Street. Several key ministers had already expressed their support, but no one was underestimating the scale of the crisis. Many of those who had voted to remain in the EU took to the streets of London on Saturday to deliver a clear and emphatic message to the government. An estimated one million gathered to demand a second referendum. What do we want? Really what do we want it? Now! And on the British Parliament website, millions have signed an online petition calling for Article 50 that triggered Brexit to be revoked breaking all records. In France, Chinese President Xi Jinping is on a state visit that is expected to deepen economic ties between the two nations, with a focus on a series of energy agreements, including cooperation in nuclear power and aerospace. President Xi, accompanied by his wife, arrived in Paris after having already met the French President Emmanuel Macron and his wife in Nice. And in nearby Monaco, President Xi became the first Chinese head of state to visit the principality. Now to Israel, where a long-range rocket destroyed a home north of Tel Aviv, injuring seven people, including three children. The strike came minutes after residents in the agricultural town of Mishmaret were woken by air raid sirens. The Israeli military's warning of what it says was a rocket launched from the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip and Israel has responded by blockading all routes into Gaza. 
On hearing the news, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced he would cut short his trip to the United States after meeting President Trump. In Mali, more than 130 people were killed in an attack on a village in the central region on Saturday by armed men wearing traditional Dogon hunters' clothing. Gunmen surrounded the village of Ogos Agu at dawn before attacking the people and raising their homes to the ground. The victims were members of the Fulani ethnic community believed to have been targeted because of alleged ties to jihadists. Now to Thailand, where two rival camps contesting the country's first election since the military coup in 2014 have both said they are trying to form a coalition government. Early results give the pro-military Palang Prasharat party a larger share of the popular vote. At the same time, the main opposition Pua Thai party claims to have won the biggest number of seats in parliament. But there are growing claims of irregularities during Sunday's poll and criticism of the Electoral Commission. On Monday, it announced the full results would not be published until May the 9th. And finally, Spider-Man to the rescue in Paris. Known as France's version of the superhero, Alain Robert scaled a 185-meter skyscraper to raise money to help restore a much older building, the Cathedral of Notre Dame. And that's your international news around the world in five.